Welcome to the show today. We're going to continue on praise and worship. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's going to be good. So it's don't go anywhere. Good. Stay tuned. Today we're continuing on the subject of the importance of giving God praise in all the things and circumstances and situations in our life. Uh, it was such a good topic last time Amen. and the message was so good that we're going to continue it here for the second week. Amen. So please, as we get into the message and, and, uh, and start hearing the continuation of it, just you know, just be free in your house just to start worshiping the Lord. Amen. 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 And if you missed the last week's episode, so don't worry about it. Just plug into this teaching teaching right now. Amen. It's, it's very essential for us as a Christian to worship Him, to, Amen. to honor Him as, a, as He's our King. He's our King and, and we are His children. All Amen. that is within us, let us praise, praise the Lord. Name. Amen. Hallelujah. So watch this and we'll be back in the end to pray with you and for you, so don't go anywhere. Mind can't comprehend worshiping eternally. If you cross over to the things of heaven, you see everybody worshiping. Why is that? Why are we fighting it and saying, I just have my finished way of worshiping and uh, that's sitting down. <laughs> Hello? And we have to align our thinking. It starts with the mind. We have to align our speaking. We have to align our actions to be with the kingdom that we understand that there is a king. And when it's time to worship him. And sometimes you got to make this uh, adjustment in your life that when things are coming, something is Something just blew up in. Maybe your car blew up. I don't know. Maybe your, 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 your heating unit at home blew up. And it's like a... It's like a crisis in your household things are happening you just gather let's just worship let's just start to praise he's like it's like brother i mean if that happens i don't really feel like it your praise has nothing to do with how you feel but your feelings will follow your praise and your praise will lift you up from that disaster to the throne where there is no problem whatsoever at any time Your quietness. Now, not everybody's quiet. Abby's not quiet. Hallelujah. But it really took me a long time to really get this. Because if, if there is no connection to the tangible world with what's going on on the inside, you know, that's not really life. That's not really faith, is it? That's just trying out ideas in your head. Because yeah. whatever happens for real starts to affect on the outside. It affects your giving. It affects your yeah. talking. It affects your outflow. It affects your words. It affects your praise. Yeah. When you start to lift him up, you just say, you might be at home by yourself. You just start to lift up the name of Jesus. You say, Jesus, be exalted. And, and, and 30 seconds ago, you were feeling bad. It's like, my goodness, <laughs> long week. <laughs> now, I only had a few hours of sleep one night because I had to do and work long and then wake up early and then get the day going and so on. And in days like that, you don't really like, you know, you don't have that feeling on the inside of you. Yeah. I mean, some of you might have had that feeling because you had a great day yesterday. You had like a power Saturday with your friends and family. <laughs> And I mean, you know, I, you know, we need that too, amen. So, but you, you, you're rested and you're good and then you come in on Sunday morning and you're like, woo, 
everything is good. And let me get my praise on. Hallelujah. Nobody talks like that here, but you know. Maybe they talk like that where Tony's from. I don't know. Hallelujah. But then your praise is really going to be tested and seen when everything was coming against you yesterday. You didn't have time to sleep because you were attending to your children. Your car didn't work, so you had to take the bus to come to church. You had to leave an hour and a half before you would have normally left. Because you had to take the public transportation and the connections on Sunday morning are kind of rough. So it took you a long time to get to church. You haven't had proper rest. You forgot to go to the store yesterday, so you didn't have any breakfast. And now you're coming in, you're feeling like, oh, I'm feeling a little down. But then on the inside of you say, I'm going to lift up a praise to Jesus this morning. I'm not even going to wait for the worship leader to get me energized. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come five minutes before nine o'clock, before the prayer even starts. You're like, Jesus, be glorified in my life. Be glorified. Praise Him. It says, and uh, that the, the meek shall eat and be satisfied, and they shall praise the Lord that seek Him. It says, the kindreds of nations shall worship before Thee. So we're part of this group where we actually engage with the culture of the kingdom with our worship. We live and we worship, and we worship and we live and we worship. And when we come together, we make it loud and we make it everything we got. And when we leave, we don't just stop there, but we continue the worship outside. We have a culture that includes worship. And I'll be honest with you, that spirit that says that it's okay for you just to sit down, it's, it's, it's not the Holy Spirit. And really, devils will accommodate your flesh. So you don't want to stay in the flesh. Thank you, Father. This has got to come to a point when we have a breakthrough in this. That we get a revelation into our hearts. That there is no God like our God. There is no one like our Jesus. And despite of what the circumstances. Even if I'm dying, I'm going to die praising the Lord. They're not going to find me whining. They're not going to find me complaining. They're going to find me worshiping and praising the Lord. There's somebody saying, uh, Pastor, you don't know what I'm facing right now. Everything is okay in your life, but uh, I, I, I have a financial need. I mean, you have all the money, but uh, uh, I mean, I just don't have any money right now. And, um, and I'm going through a rough time with the relationship and things. How do you know what's going on in my life? <laughs> now, if, if you're close to me, you know, you probably, you know, you know some things. But I don't come here on Sunday to let you know what's wrong in my life. Because my confession is not going to line up with the circumstances. It's going to line up with the kingdom that Jesus came to establish. It's going to line up with his word that let every circumstance turn around in the name of Jesus. And in the midst of the biggest trial, I'm just going to start to praise him. Jesus be exalted. You are greater, Lord. And you start to sing a song. And you're like, brother, I don't sing. It doesn't matter. You will when the Holy Ghost gets on you. Now, our worship leader will use discernment whether you get a mic or not. But everybody should sing. You get what I'm saying. Not everybody needs a mic, but everybody should be singing in the place. Hallelujah. Now, I, you don't have to turn there. I'll give you the story. But in 1 Samuel 36, 1 Samuel 36, uh, David was in a place where his own men wanted to kill him, his own fellow army. It says that David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. 
It's like, uh, brother, I came to service today and my family wanted to stone me this morning, but I decided to come and worship. So I'm facing a few uh, obstacles in my life. Uh, I think most of us are facing something a little bit less significant than sudden death after the church service this morning. Now somebody might be watching, you might be facing that, I don't know. Are you with me? So David was facing sudden death because Saul of all the people, because of the soul of all the people were grieved or they, uh, the, their souls have become bitter, one translation says. Every man for his sons and for his daughters because they had lost their families, they had lost everything that they got. So they became bitter and they were going to kill David because of it. And this sentence, and you understand the heart of David, it just says, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He was facing sudden death and he just encouraged himself. It's like, what, 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 what was going on here? If we know that David was a worshiper, he would play for Saul and the evil spirits wouldn't bother him. Are you with me? David had an anointing resting on his life. He was a worshiper. So he began to lift up the name of the Lord. He began to, to encourage himself in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might be facing some things today. And I'm not saying those things aren't real. The stones were real that David was facing. But out of the praise, out of that place with David's life, came the voice of God that gave him the next victory. So David marched in by direction of the Lord into the next victory because of his encouraging himself in the Lord. And there are great things that the Lord has put on the inside of you. But for many of you, it's like it's on and it's off and it's here and it's not. And then when the, when the bishop comes to time, you get excited. And then, then, then a visitor comes with a power. You get excited. And some Sundays, you, some Wednesdays, you get excited. And sometimes you get encouraged by something. But then it's like it goes on and it goes off. But when you become and get into this point, you just get in and start to get your praise on. When the heat is the most intense, you just increase the praise. You just, I'm going to lift the Lord up in this circumstance. He's greater what I'm feeling. He's greater, uh, greater than what I'm facing. He's bigger than this company. He's bigger than the, than the tax officials. He's bigger. He's bigger than the banks. He's greater. He's greater than the offices and the departments of the Finnish government. He's greater. He's greater. Because in the end, the problem is not really in the surroundings. It's between you and God. Because there's no problem with Him. We know that. Say this after me. There is no problem with God. So basically, there's plenty of power available. Hello? So the power is available. But sometimes there's a disconnect. And when we get to that point in our life, that we purposefully understand, now is time to glorify and praise Him. You might be in the low. You might be feeling like somebody stoned you. You might be feeling you got hit in the head with a rock. But you, I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus right now. I'm going to start to worship and praise Him. There is nothing that's going to hold me down. Hallelujah. And something starts to happen. Something starts to happen. Because you understand, Jesus is on the throne. So you got to enter in with your praise. Many people are whining, complaining, speaking out of their depression, speaking out of their, 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 their self-pity, speaking out. They feel like they're, they're in, a, in a pit, in a mud, and they're expecting the Lord to come into the mud with them. No, I'm here to tell you that it's time to plug in to the foundations of the kingdom and align ourselves with the Word of God. And say, despite I might be in the pit today, 
But I'm out of my mouth, out of my heart. Out with everything that I got is going to come up a song of praise. I'm going to start to glorify Jesus. He's changed my life. Hallelujah. Psalm 103, David is putting it out. He's saying, forget not all his benefits. Who saves me, who heals me. How great is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. So your flesh doesn't st does not tell you when and when not to praise and what to say and what to, what, what to, how to honor God. But you, you tell your body, you tell your lips that now I'm going to glorify Jesus. Like, I don't really feel like that. Shut that flesh up. Your spirit tell, praise the Lord. David writes, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Not just my left arm a little bit here. And I got my right brain engaged a little bit while I'm thinking with the left brain about some other things. I got my, I got my praise on. No, all that is within me. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. And maybe you, you've noticed that we don't do a big beginning speech here when we start to praise. We're just like, let's get this thing on the road. Bah, let's just praise him. Let's just praise him. Let's just, let's just lift him up. But what's going on here? Oh, we're just praising him. We're just praising him. We're just lifting him up. Because we, we want to see a group of people who don't need like a, I know you had a long week. And, and uh, I know you're going through the rough time. But let's just try to go ahead and do something here anyways. And, and, I mean, if that's the standard, I mean, where will we end up? My goodness. Now, Finland is like this crazy floorball country, right? And I think they played the final in Seinäjoki now. And uh, I think that's it. Thank you for the, thank you for the enthusiasm. My, uh, my old hometown lost, I believe, in the final. But, you know, people in there, they, they, when, when the game started, you didn't have to go talk to them. It's like, I know you had a rough week today, but uh, if you could get a little bit more excited. I mean, when the ball hits the ground, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, it's my team, it's my team. And then the same people come to church, it's like, hey, I'm worshiping my own way. And then I'm supposed to accommodate that. By having somebody here give a five-minute speech that it's okay to stay in the flesh. My God, what kind of a crazy talk is that? All that is within me, praise His holy name. Everything that is within me, praise His holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Everything you need is in His presence. Wisdom, direction. There's healing. There's, there's, there's freedom in His presence. Why don't you just go ahead and enter in and just start to praise Him. You say, Jesus, you are everything to me. Lord, I lift you. I exalt you high. Exalt you high. Your brain is saying, but I got the circumstances. Shut up. Shut up, I'm honoring the Lord. I'm lifting up my Savior. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> you start to honor and worship Him, praise Him. He's not a son of man. He is the Lord Almighty. He deserves your praise. He deserves your praise when you're feeling good. He deserves your praise when you're feeling bad. He deserves your praise in the morning. He deserves your praise in the evening. If you wake up in the middle of the night, He deserves your praise. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We lift.
lift you high, Lord Almighty. You will be exalted. When you become the, when you become a praiser and a worshiper, nobody's gonna have to encourage you to come to church. You're gonna just show up, hallelujah. You're gonna just come up. When are the doors open? I wanna worship and honor him. Hallelujah. Jesus. I know it's difficult, but let's take a seat for just a moment. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, because somebody's wondering, where's he going to the New Testament? Can you read me something from the New Covenant? I'm in the New Covenant. You're in the New Covenant. We're the manifestation of the New Covenant. The sons of God in the kingdom, we worship the King. We praise the King. Hallelujah. What does it tell about the church if the, if the people in the world are more excited about a game, a floorball game, that, than, than people in the church are about Jesus? What does it say? It's that there's no passion. But I'll guarantee there will be passion when everyone will see him and every knee will bow Amen. and every tongue will confess. There will be a lot of passion. Because then it will be clear. But in a book of, I mean, I mean, even if Ephesians, you don't have to turn there, but Ephesians 5.19 says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. La, la, la. <laughs> singing and making melody to, in your heart to the Lord. Singing and making melody in your heart. Colossians 3.16 says, spiritual songs singing. Spiritual songs and singing. But in a, in a great book of Acts, in uh, chapter 16 and verse 22, I'll read you the story. And we'll finish up with this. And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates... magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Was that what happened to you yesterday? Is that why you're feeling a little down this morning? <laughs> Somebody watching there is like, yeah, I don't feel like going to church this morning. I, I got a rough day yesterday. Did you get, did, did you get your clothes stripped off? And you got beaten? Maybe you did. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the prison charging the jailer to keep them safely who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks so the officials of the time tossed the disciples into the inner prison after they had been whipped beaten And not only just in the prison, but into the furthest back corner of the prison. Hello. So now they're in shackles in a pit that stinks. And their back's hurting. Their body is aching. They were on a mission. They, they weren't doing anything wrong. They were preaching the gospel of the kingdom. They were advancing. But you know devil will do anything he can he'll stir up strife he'll stir up opposition he'll stir up persecution to stop but what i'm giving you today is actually a key hallelujah, hallelujah. you could see some people getting expressive with their praising and getting Amen. loud in their praising and Amen. and you know it, it really it's impossible to praise god without nothing happening just just inside you because Bible says that praise the Lord all my soul and Amen. all that it's within me so um, it's it's going to be visible it's, it's something that you do to praise him amen yeah. amen and and you know we have different upbringings we have different cultures but really in the kingdom when we worship the one when we worship the king 
then just like David, you know, you just give it all and you just start to lift his holy name. And, and it's, it's also, wonderful. it is a willing sacrifice that, that, it's that, true. that we go and we do it. Nobody's going to do it on our, <laughs> on our behalf. And God is going to be so pleased with us and so happy with us when, when he sees us willingly worshiping. It's something that we need to do. We need to put our flesh doing it. Hallelujah. And, and really, it's he who only has our heart. He's the one who has our heart. Mm. He's the one who we love. Mm. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. So what, what, what hinders you? What, what, what's holding you back? Uh, just, uh, just, just praise him. He's, he's worthy. Amen. He's, he, he's, he's worthy. He's, he deserves it. Hallelujah. He's good. Amen. And uh, if you've been watching this program and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've never taken him as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you to do that today. I believe the Holy Spirit has already been drawing you uh, to himself. So just pray this prayer from your heart, but also with your lips. And just say this, uh, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, I turn my back on the world. Lord, I turn my back on the world. And I want to follow you. And I want to follow you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For di dying for me. For dying for me. And I thank you. And thank that you. That you're coming back again for me. And that you're me. coming back again for me. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. That you have come in the flesh. That you have come in the flesh. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And right now. And right now. By faith. By faith. By the finished work of the cross. By the finished work of the cross. I receive you. I receive you. As, as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. I am saved. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm born again. And I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm on my way to heaven. Because I have Jesus in my heart. Because I have Jesus in my heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you pray that prayer, now you are the Son of God. He has transferred you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of His dear Son. Amen. And He is now your Lord. Jesus is your Lord. And, and king that you can worship and you can praise and maybe 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 you understand it now a little bit better what Amen. we're talking about. Amen. Just start to worship him. He is so good. He is so good. Amen. Really. And even if you prayed that prayer before, you know, um, always remember constantly to praise him. Don't say, you know, I praised him. I praised him last summer when I, you know, felt like it on some <laughs> special conference. No, it is a, it is a constant thing that we should we should do every day. Every well, the first thing when 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 we wake up and and our flesh always has a tendency to want to do it our own way. You know, want to not to submit. You know, but uh, when we start praising him, that's an awesome thing where our, our we, we we put our flesh under in that really. You know? Amen. And I all will. Amen. But um, if you pray that prayer, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, there's a couple of ways that you can get in touch with us by social media or by sending a prayer request on our website. So please do that so we can find out what the Lord is doing in your life. We would love to hear from you. Amen. And we're so glad you're, you're, you're watching us and we hope to see you again next week. Amen. Be blessed.